So Mr. Cooper, uh, currently you are Director General for uh, External and Political Military Affairs at the Council of European Union. And uh, that means, uh, do you closely work together with uh, Mr. Solana, is this correct? Exactly, okay. yes. And uh, prior to the present position, uh, you were also a British diplomat until 2002, also, yes. ser uh, also serving at the uh, embassies in different countries, including Japan. That's right, right. Okay. although Japan was a long time ago. Right, okay. Uh, well, uh, concerning with Japan, what was your uh, diplomatic mission? And uh, what was the situation during that uh, time? Well, this is, uh, it really is a long time ago. Right. Uh, maybe it's before you were born. Right. Um, and I was a very junior, I was a very junior diplomat. I, I did a number of different uh, things in the embassy. I worked, uh, first I spent a little bit of time learning Japanese, most of which I have now unfortunately forgotten. Um, I um, then spent some, um, I was then doing, I did then commercial work for some time, uh, uh, attempting to help British companies who were trying to sell things in Japan, which at the time seemed to be very difficult. Um, uh, and then after that, I was the ambassador's private secretary for, for a period. Okay. And uh, concerning on today's Japanese foreign policy, uh, last year basically that Mr. Abe, who was mm. appointed as a prime minister, uh, uh, told the public that there should be a revision of constitution, which meant that uh, Japan might uh, have their own independent uh, foreign security policy separate from the U uh, U.S. But uh, in this context, uh, I guess this is also a sensitive issue, uh, especially uh, after the World War II, uh, what do you think about the future of Japan, uh, Japanese foreign security policy? Do you think uh, it is necessary to have strong tie with the US or do you think it should go more regionally and uh, cooperate with the uh, other Asian neighbor countries? Well, I think for, for any country in the world, uh, there are two things that matter in its foreign policy above everything else. One is its relations with its neighbors, uh, and the other is the relationship with the USA. Second matters because the USA is still, uh, in spite of everything, overwhelmingly the dominant uh, power in the world, especially in terms of military power. Um, uh, but I don't think that one should... Uh, both are necessary. I don't think that any country should neglect either one or the other. And um, uh, Japan is itself a, is a country of importance. In terms of GNP, it's the second country in the world. Um, uh, it's been for a long time uh, the leading country in Asia. It's had profound influence on the whole of Asia. Um, the relationship of Japan and the USA is a central part of, of Japanese foreign policy, but it should not be the only Thing in Japanese foreign policy. Um, uh, the, the, the time that I was in Japan was um, uh, the time, uh, uh, actually I'm not sure if I was there at the time, it was, maybe it was just after the so-called Nixon shock. Right. Uh, um, uh, Japan at the time had um, wanted very much to have a relationship with China, which has a lot in both in common with Japan in terms of culture and history, uh, and but the two countries are very complementar complementary, um, and there are obviously enormous business opportunities in China as well. And uh, for years, Japan was not allowed essentially to have a normal relationship with Japan by the USA and then suddenly the US um, uh, without telling Japan uh, changes its own relationship with with China. Well that's how international politics are, it's rough, uh, it's a game partly of every man for himself and uh, um, uh, European countries have had similar experiences. It's how great powers behave the way to protect yourself against that is uh, by not becoming uh, 
utterly dependent on one single power. Uh, you need to create uh, some room for maneuver by having uh, different relationships. Uh, relationship with the USA is for European countries as well uh, something of absolute importance but that doesn't mean to say that you don't have other relationships for example Germany which was entirely dependent on the USA for its security always had a relationship with the Soviet Union and today with Russia that was very different from that of Washington's relationship with Moscow so I think Japan can do this too. Okay. Uh, concerning on the EU and Japan relation, uh, what sort of the aspects of the most important area of cooperation? Well, uh, this is, um, you, you could say that this is a very boring relationship um, uh, because there are no real problems. Um, uh, while I was in Japan, there were uh, continual problems, mostly resulting from large Japanese trade surpluses. Uh, I'm happy that people seem to have escaped from, uh, from, from that. I'm happy that we are operating a more liberal trade system today than we were then. Um, and uh, the questions that now come up in relationship with Japan are much more related to how we can work together in handling global problems like, uh, like climate change. But uh, there it's, the relationship is, uh, is very good uh, and very straightforward. And uh, in that sense, as I said, uh, very boring. But in foreign policy, boring is good. Right. Uh, exciting means that your relationship is problematic. Yeah, okay. And, uh, uh, and uh, in your book, The Breaking of Nations, uh, you point out that both EU and Japan are, can be the example of the postmodern states. And yes. do you think this fact yeah. contribute to the good relation between the two? Yes, I, I think that there are. Uh, I think that there are a lot of similarities um, uh, that um, uh, we we are both areas which have very uh, important relationships with the USA. Um, and we are both areas that both countries, in the case of Japan and a group of countries in the case of Europe, um, uh, that had a uh, devastating experience of war. Um, uh, something that is actually different from the USA. Uh, the most devastating war experience that the US had was in fact the American Civil War. 50 years ago. Um, the, uh, uh, but I think that there is a strong commitment in both in Europe and Japan to peace. Okay. And uh, although there are some similarities about the sort of the principles such as uh, democracy or human rights between these two uh, regions, uh, but there is still some differences, for example, death penalty in yes. Japan. How yes. do you perceive this uh, fact? Well, um, actually all European countries uh, have now very strong feelings about the, the death penalty. Um, uh, I'm not sure how everybody else reached this conclusion, but uh, I, know that, um, I know that in the UK all of our studies showed that the implementation of the death penalty was fundamentally unfair, that there was a random question in it. But it's more than just that. I think that it's um, a, a, a dislike of uh, the state killing people. Um, uh, uh, we don't find that it, um, uh, it's effective as a way of organizing society. Um, and uh, I don't think that it's really compatible with the kind of state that any of us want to be. Okay. Um, I would like to also ask you about the European Common Foreign Security Policy, mm -hmm. and uh, okay, uh, the one of the uh, the first common strategy is the European Security Strategy. Um, 